I'm not, I disconnected it. much that was great this man this is a man that loves the people of montana loves the people of this country it's time to retire liberal democrat john tester and you're going to get on your side a real montana fighter you see it you've been watching for the last six months he is a tough cookie he's a fighter He's going to fight for you, Matt Rosendale. So John Tester says one thing when he's in Montana, but I will tell you, I'm testament to it, he does the exact opposite when he goes to Washington. A vote for John Tester is a vote for Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi,
repealing Obamacare. And even though we got a, a little surprise vote that evening, you all remember that evening, somebody came in with a thumbs down after campaigning for years that he was going to repeal and replace. But that's OK, because we, for the most part, have already done it. And we have great health care coming out. And it just came out two weeks ago. And we got rid of the individual mandate and lots of other things. Sometimes we have to do it the hard way, but that's OK, too. John Tester voted no on tax cuts for Montana families. He voted no on cutting the estate tax or the death tax for your farms, your farmers, and your small businesses. Think of that one. Think of that one. But you got it anyway because we got it passed. So on your farms, for the most part, you will have no estate tax or death tax to pay. You can leave your farm. You can leave your small business to your children or whoever you want to leave them. Don't always leave them to the children. If the children aren't good children, don't leave, leave them to somebody else. But you have no tax to pay. Pretty good, right? Nobody thought that was going to happen. Tester voted against it. John Tester voted no on legislation to stop late-term abortions. You wouldn't think he'd play very well out here. How did he get elected? I mean, I know, I know a lot of people from Montana. You got to explain that one to me. How did he get elected? All right. You can right your wrong in November, OK? You can right your wrong. Matt Rosenberg. John Tester voted no on Kate's Law. You know what Kate's Law is? That's legislation named for Kate Steinle, who was gunned down by a five-time deported illegal immigrant. You deserve a senator who doesn't just talk like he's from Montana. You deserve a senator who actually votes like he's from Montana. <laughs> Tester even voted no on enhanced vetting for refugees from terror stricken countries. You believe this one? What's going on with that? The Democrats want open borders, which means lots of crime. We want tough, strong, powerful borders, and we want no crime, and we're going to protect ICE. We protect ICE. They protect us, and we protect them. They protect us, and we protect them. You saw that clown yesterday on the Statue of Liberty. You see the guys that went up there? I wouldn't have done it. I would have said, let's get some nets, and let's wait till she comes down. Just get some nets, really. You see those guys, the bravery of doing that? What a group. We protect ICE and our Border Patrol and our law enforcement and our fire department and our fire department, but we protect our people. John Tester opposed our travel ban to keep America safe, which, by the way, I'm proud to report that last week, the Supreme Court of the United States just upheld the Trump travel ban And they gave us the authority to protect our nation, keep our nation safe, to keep it safe. As you know, there's now a vacancy on the Supreme Court. And if you turn in Monday at 9 o'clock, I think you're going to be extremely happy with the selection, right? And they're all great. They're all great. And I want to thank Justice Kennedy for his lifetime of truly distinguished service. And he had confidence in me. He left because he said, you're going to pick somebody great. And so nice. So nice. Great man. Great, a great gentleman. John Tester voted against Neil Gorsuch, the incredible justice who supports fully our Constitution. That's a hard one to vote against, isn't it? 
Tester opposed many of our amazing judges. And yet, I see John Tester saying such nice things about me. I say, yeah, but he never votes for me. He never votes. And it's all, I'd rather have him say bad about me, but vote, right? Yet John Tester voted for liberal Obama judges who tried to take away your Second Amendment, tried to take it away. Because Tester doesn't share your values. John Tester showed his true colors with his shameful, dishonest attacks on a great man, a friend of mine, a man that I said, why don't you run the VA? You'd be great. Navy Admiral Ronnie Jackson. And a report just came out. And I should have brought it because I would have read it. But it's long but beautiful for Ronnie Jackson. Secret Service are all over the place. And they wrote a report that what he said was so false and so untrue. It never happened. And they could have ruined, they could have ruined, could have ruined a lesser man. But Dr. Jackson, I don't know, do I, should I call him Admiral or Doctor? I'll call him both. Doctor slash Admiral. He's a doctor. He's an Admiral. His son is a top, really a top, like a top, top student at Annapolis, graduating this year. Incredible wife, incredible family. You know, I feel guilty. I feel guilty. Admiral Jackson was getting ready to leave service, and he served many years admirably. Not a blemish, perfect. Beautiful person. A lot of you know exactly. He actually said I was healthy. You know, he was the one. When the fake news started saying, oh, why isn't Trump giving the physical? Why? Dr. Jackson and his staff, they went out, they gave me a physical. That was a physical. And when they said, I'm very healthy, the news was devastated. They were devastated. They didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to hear that. But he's a great family man. And, and I said to him, I, I feel guilty. I said, hey, Doc, why don't you run the VA? You're a leader. You're an admiral. People admire you. He's an admired guy, or I wouldn't have done it. Well, sir, I wasn't really thinking of that. I said, Doc, you'll be great. Go ahead and do it, sir. Whatever your order, I will do. You know, he's like, even if he didn't want to do it, he said that to me. In fact, your great first lady said to me that same day, well, did he want to do it? I said, I really don't know. He said he'd do it. But then when I thought about it, I don't know. But he said, if you ask, I will do it. But he didn't really want to do it. So I sort of feel guilty about this whole thing. Because what happened is he said, sir, if you would like me to do it, I'll do it. Wasn't what he had in mind. I put him into the world of politics. How vicious is the world? But John Tester said things about him that were horrible and that weren't true. And that's probably why I'm here, because I won Montana by so many points. I don't have to come here. I don't have to. You know, a lot of people from states where we have these crazy big leads, we had 42 and 44. We won by 44 points over a Democrat. Yeah. Over a Democrat. We won one by 44 points over a Democrat. Now, it was crooked Hillary, but still, she's a Democrat. And, yeah. No, she gets special treatment. Sorry, sorry. She gets special treatment under the Justice Department. Sorry, sorry, sorry. She gets special treatment under the Justice Department. Anybody else in America? How about that FBI agent? How about that guy? You think he liked me? You think he liked me? You think there was just a little bias there, a little bias? Oh, did we catch them in the act? It's a rigged deal, folks. It's a rigged deal. I used to say it. It's a rigged deal. 
deal. It's a disgrace. And we go away on Monday. We appoint and go away, and I'll see lots of people. I'll see NATO, and I'm going to tell NATO, you got to start paying your bills. The United States is not going to take care of everything. We're paying for anywhere from 70 to 90 percent to protect Europe, and that's fine. Of course, they kill us on trade. They kill us on other things. They make it impossible to do business in Europe, yet they come in and they sell their Mercedes and their BMWs to us. So we have $151 billion in trade deficits with the EU. And on top of that, they kill us with NATO. They kill us. So we pay 4% of a huge GDP, which got a lot bigger since I became your president. And Germany, Germany, which is the biggest country of the EU, European Union, Germany pays 1%. 1%. And I said, you know, Angela, I can't guarantee it, but we're protecting you, and it means a lot more to you than protecting us, because I don't know how much protection we get by protecting you. And then they go out and they make a gas deal, oil and gas from Russia, where they pay billions and billions of dollars to Russia, OK? So they want to protect against Russia, yet they pay billions of dollars to Russia, and we're the schmucks that are paying for the whole thing. <laughs> so then, I, and by the way, I have to say this. Since I came, which is a year and a half, almost $33 billion more is projected to be paid by those NATO nations, but it's not enough. Do they ever tell you that? No. No. But. But I will tell you, the Secretary General, Stoltenberg, is Trump's biggest fan. He said, those NATO nations are all going like this, less money, less money, why not? And when you came in and you started talking, it went like a rocket ship. It went just like a rocket ship. So, so anytime I suggest anything, so we've gotten 33 billion, oh, it's gonna be a lot more money than that. But if then they say, oh, let's see, he's angry at NATO. I guess, yeah, he loves Russia. I love Russia. I will say this, I'm meeting with President Putin next week and getting along, let me tell you, getting along with Russia and getting along with China and getting along with other countries is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. I would say for stupid people or for political people, because they're not stupid, all they are is good at obstruction, good at resisting. You know, the whole thing is resist, right? But every time it comes up, I will say this. I'm going to have to ask him this question. How bad has it been since Trump has been in? Take a look at what's happened. Take a look at We've just increased our military spending. We're at $700 billion. We've become a nation that is exporting energy for the first time. We're exporting energy. So many things. And you look at all the money that NATO is getting now. They're probably saying in Russia, you know, if we did like this guy, we made a big mistake. We'd rather have crooked Hillary Clinton. I think they would much rather have Hillary. But, but getting along with other countries, and you're talking nuclear powers, in all fairness, getting along is really a nice thing. It's a smart thing. We're going to beat everybody. We have the greatest military we have now. Look, we have now, and hopefully we'll never have to use it. You know, the only way you're never going to have to use it, if it's so powerful, so good, so strong, that nobody wants to play games. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We'll never have to use it. And then, of course, we have North Korea, where, do you notice, eight months. So during the Obama administration, it seemed like a missile a week. I mean, a lot of missiles going up, a lot of rockets going up, a lot of nuclear testing. They thought there was an earthquake the size of something they've never tested before. 
They said, where is it? Oh, it's in Korea someplace. They said, why don't you check nuclear weapons? It was a nuclear weapon, all right? So since the rhetoric stopped, you know, we had very tough rhetoric. Would you say that was a little tough, right? So remember, they said, he's too tough. He's going to cause a war. It's too tough. Now they say, he's too nice. He's too nice. He's too nice. I got along very well with Chairman Kim. I got along very well. That's a good thing that I got along well. Now, what hasn't happened in eight months? In eight months, first of all, we got our prisoners back before I even went, right? And I didn't pay 1.8 billion, by the way, in cash. We didn't pay 1.8, right? We paid slightly less than 1.8. We paid nothing. And yet, and yet, it was a very smart deal for North Korea. Goodwill is very important. But we signed a wonderful paper uh, saying they're going to denuclearize their whole thing. It's going to all happen. But now, you know, you're back. I was back, I think, six days. Why hasn't it started? Why? I mean, these guys were... Obama was very close to going to war. You have 30 million people in Seoul. It's 30 miles off the border, and that's a tough border. Thousands of, of cannons, they call them. These are big, big guns. I'm not even talking about nuclear. You could have lost 30, 40, 50 million people. You could have had a war like you haven't had in a long time. And guess what you have now? Eight months, no nuclear testing, no missiles, no anything. Mike Pompeo is over there right now. And they, they, they say, he, meaning me, these guys, the crooked press, they are so disowned. They are so disowned. Fake news. They're fake news media. So what do they say all the time? Because I didn't give anything up. What do they say all the time? They say, he went there. I went there. I went to Singapore. We had a meeting. By agreeing to meet, you know, they can't come up with anything else. Like, I didn't give like Clinton and like Obama would have. You know, Obama couldn't meet. Now they say, well, Obama, Obama couldn't meet. They wouldn't see him. So I didn't have like Clinton where they gave him billions and billions of dollars and got nothing. Okay? So they couldn't find anything. So what do they do? They say, he met. I met. That's what we lost, folks. He met. Now, by the way, Obama would have loved to have met. They wouldn't see him. They wouldn't see him. One of the first questions I asked when I was over there, they wouldn't see him. So I met. That's how we got beaten. Now they're saying it with Putin. Well, Putin is highly prepared. And Trump, will he be prepared for the meeting? Trust me, we'll do just fine. We'll do just fine. Fake news, bad people. Will he be prepared? Will he be prepared? And I might even end up having a good relationship, but they're going, will President Trump be prepared? You know, President Putin is KGB and this and that. You know what? Putin's fine. He's fine. We're all fine with people. Will I be prepared? Totally prepared. I've been preparing for this stuff my whole life. They don't say that. They don't say that. And you really do, you really, and I'll tell you what, because I see it, I see the way they're right. They're so damn dishonest. And I don't mean all of them, because some of the finest people I know are journalists, really. Hard to believe when I say that. I hate to say it, but I have to say. But 75% of those people are downright dishonest. Downright dishonest. They're fake. They're fake. They quote sources. A source within the Trump organization said. A source. They don't have a source. They never use names anymore. You know, in the old days, you have to use names. Jim Smith said that Donald Trump is a bad guy. They don't do that anymore. They say a source within the administration. They make the sources up. They don't exist in many cases. 
Anytime you say, you know, I saw one of them said, 15 anonymous sources. I don't have 15 people in the way. I mean, forget it. <laughs> 15 anonymous sources have said all sorts of stuff. These are really bad people. But here's the bottom line. We're here. How the hell did we get here? Really? How did we get here? How did we get here? So if you look at John Tester, he signed up for the Democrats' radical immigration agenda, which is let them come in. And we believe, they say, in sanctuary cities where they house the criminals and others. We believe in strong borders and no crime. It's very simple. Strong borders. We believe in coming into this country legally. We believe in coming in legally. We believe in the merit system. So when you have a business and somebody comes in, and honestly, hate to tell you this, got to go with it. We are doing so well. So many businesses are moving back to this country. So many car companies are coming back into Michigan and to Ohio and to Pennsylvania and to North and South Carolina. We need people. We don't have the workers anymore. And by the way, that's something that's unique. You haven't heard that for a long time. Wages are going up, right? But we need people. But who do we need? We need people that come in under the merit system. Under the merit system. A vote for the Democrats in November is a vote to let MS-13 run wild in our communities. To let drugs pour into our cities and to take jobs and benefits away from our hardworking Americans, and we're not letting it happen. <laughs> Democrats want anarchy. They really do. And they don't know who they're playing with, folks. I said it the other day, yes, she is a low IQ individual, Maxine Waters. I said it the other day. Hi. I mean, Honestly, she's somewhere in the mid-60s, I believe that. <laughs> he will be impeached. I will impeach him. Even the Democrats are saying, how are you saying that? They don't want to use that word because it gets the Republicans out the vote. They say, stay away from that word. Especially since he's done nothing wrong. That helps also, right? There's no collusion. No collusion. After spending $22 million, it's awfully tough. And the House just left, and they said, there's no collusion. Can you imagine this? It's all a ruse. This was an excuse for the Democrats who lost an election, who actually got their ass kicked, 306. That's a pretty good shellacking. 306. Hey, we won states. Take Wisconsin. I just left Wisconsin. So we won. In fact, we're building their building. Friends of mine, Foxconn, they make the Apple laptops and iPhones. They're incredible. They are, we're going to spend, they are going to spend like $11 billion in this. It's going to be about a $15 billion plant. There will be nothing like it in this country. And frankly, outside of China, there will be nothing like it. But by the time it's finished, it'll top anything in China also. It's incredible. It's incredible. But, but $15 billion, 15,000 jobs, Wisconsin. But think of Wisconsin. Reagan had his big win. He won every state except one, the great state of Wisconsin. I won Wisconsin. First time, first time since Dwight Eisenhower in 1953. And we won Michigan. And we won Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and Florida. We ran up that East Coast. You had to run up that East Coast. Winning the Electoral College is very tough for Republicans, much tougher than the so-called popular vote, where people vote four times, you know. Much tougher. Much, much tougher. We had a great 
We had a great victory, but think of it, not since Dwight Eisenhower, 1952. What an evening. Was that one of the great evenings? Was that one of the great evenings? And I always say, because the ratings that they're getting are beyond belief. You know, the New York Times was ready to fold. It was going to close. And then I came along, unfortunately, and they, they sell. But don't worry, because ultimately, when I leave in seven years from now, of course, they'll fold. They will fold. No, no, when you see the Times, how dishonest they are, when you see the Washington Post, how totally dishonest. When we leave, and I actually say this, they are all doing numbers that they've, like, never done. When I announce, they are going to endorse me. Because if I lose, should I lose? Or if I don't run, they're out of business. Who's going to cover? They're going to cover Bernie? Hey, they're going to cover, like, Sleepy Joe Biden? They're going to cover Pocahontas, who was... Think of it. Think of it. She of the great tribal heritage. What tribe is it? Uh, let me think about that one. <laughs> Meantime, she's based her life on being a minority. Pocahontas. They always want me to apologize for saying it. And I hereby... Oh, no, I want to apologize. I'll use tonight. Pocahontas, I apologize to you. I apologize. To you, I apologize. To the, to the fake Pocahontas, I won't about it. No, it's causing her problems. You know, that name's good. Because now even the liberals are saying, take a test. Take a test. You know, the, I tell you, I, I shouldn't tell you, because I like not to give away secrets. But this one. Let's say I'm debating Pocahontas, right? I promise you I'll do this. I will take, you know those little kits they sell on television for $2? Learn your heritage. Guy says, I was born in Scotland. It turns out he was born in Puerto Rico, and that's okay. It's good. You know. Guy says, I was born in Germany. Well, he wasn't born in Germany. He was born someplace else. I'm going to get one of those little kids. And in the middle of the debate, when she proclaims that she's of Indian heritage, because her mother said she has high cheekbones. That's her only evidence, that her mother said she had high cheekbones. We will take that little kit and say, but we have to do it gently. Because we're in the Me Too generation, so we have to be very gentle. And we will very gently take that kit, and we will slowly toss it, hoping it doesn't hit her and injure her arm. Even though it only weighs probably two ounces. And we will say, I will give you a million dollars to your favorite charity, paid for by Trump, if you take the test and it shows you're an Indian, you know. And let's see what she does, right? I have a feeling she will say no, but we'll hold that for the debates. Do me a favor, keep it within this room, because I don't want to give away any secrets. And the press is very honorable, they won't. Please don't tell her what I just said. <laughs> Democrats are launching outrageous attacks against our incredible law enforcement and our ICE and Border Patrol. The new platform of the Democrat Party, and by the way, I call it the Democrat Party. It sounds better rhetorically. You know, I wrote bestsellers. I, I guess I speak well. You know, we turned away thousands of people. They never say I'm a great speaker. Why the hell do so many people come? Why do so I don't think it's true. Why do they come? Why? Why or why do they come? Got to be something. I guess they like my policy. Maybe you like policy. No, it's true. Have you ever noticed? You never hear that. You never hear that. You never hear it. I mean, there's got to be a reason. I have broken more Elton John records. He seems to have a lot of records. And we beat, and I, by the way, I don't have a musical instrument. I don't have a guitar or an organ. No organ. Elton has an organ and lots of other people helping. No, we've broken a lot of records. We've broken virtually every record. 
Because, you know, look, I only need this space. They need much more room. For basketball, for hockey, for all the sports, they need a lot of room. We don't need it. We have people in that space. So we break all these records. But really, we do it without, like, the musical instruments. This is the only musical, the mouth. It's, and hopefully the brain attached to the mouth, right? The brain, more important than the mouth, is the brain. The brain is much more important. But the, do you ever notice, do you ever hear something? They say, uh, you know, we had a case last week. We were in a great place in Wisconsin. And we had a tremendous crowd. And we have, like, the choice of a 22,000-seat arena. And in retrospect, we would have packed it, and they would have sent away thousands of people. But the people said to me, very innocent people, they were great. But I hadn't met them. I said, why didn't you? They, they filled up a 7,000-seat arena, walked away thousands of people like over 20. And we would have felt, I said, why didn't you use the big arena? He said, sir, we knew that if you had five vacant seats, empty seats, see, vacant is because I was in the real estate business, I use that term. <laughs> if you had five empty seats, they would say, Donald Trump was unable to fill the arena. <laughs> and I said, you know what, you're right. How about the one from the Washington Post? They got there four hours early, and the arena hadn't started even letting people in. So there were just a few people. You all saw that story, I hope. You all saw that story, right? They got there four hours, five hours. This writer sleaze back. He didn't get fired. He said Donald Trump had an empty arena. Except when I showed up, the place was packed, and they had to walk away thousands of people, right? And I didn't see the story. But you know who saw the story? The people that were in the arena. And they went nuts. And they apologized. But you know where they apologized on Twitter? They didn't write it. They apologized. But they had the story. Donald Trump, not very good crowd tonight. And they show a totally empty arena that four hours later. And by the way, hate to say it, take a look at the pictures for the inauguration. We had some monster crowd. Big monster. Big monster. But take a look at that. So they show an arena before the people started coming in. There were a few people, four or five hours ahead. And they apologized. It's, it's a disgrace. But let me just tell you, the Democrats, we call them the Democrat Party. You know why? The Democratic Party sounds too good. It sounds better, doesn't it? I always hate saying the Democrat Party. And a lot of people say you made a mistake. Well, actually, the name is the Democrat Party. The Democratic Party sounds too good, so I don't want to use it, OK? <laughs> the new platform of the Democrat Party is to abolish ICE. In other words, they want to abolish immigration enforcement entirely. That's what they want to do. They want, they want everybody coming in. And you know, the beauty with ICE, they're so tough. When you have these MS-13 thugs come in, ICE goes in and wipes them out like nothing because they're much tougher. They wipe them out. And they liberate towns on Long Island and other places. You know, it's like, like you're occupied. It's like a nation is occupying your country. So we're taking them out by the thousands. And if it weren't for ICE, we wouldn't be doing it. These are savage gangs, MS-13 and others. We will not stand for these vile Democrat smears against our law enforcement. And that includes our great police. That includes our great border patrol. That includes our military, where they're always fighting against funding for the military. We will always stand by proudly the heroes, and there are heroes on ICE and Border Patrol and law enforcement and our military. Every day I'm president, we will track down the gang members, drug dealers, child predators, and criminal aliens that we find. We will get them. We will throw them the hell out of our country or put them in jail. So this year, 
in November, if you want to save ICE, and frankly, if you want to save your law enforcement, if you want to save your military, getting military funding, we got 700 billion, the biggest ever, then next year, 716. We saved our military. Getting military funding from these Democrats is almost impossible. They don't want it. They don't care about our military. They don't care about our law enforcement. They couldn't give a damn. You better vote Republican. We need more Republicans. If you want to protect your family and your community, then you have no choice. You have to vote for Matt. You have to vote for Republicans. If you want to have a country, if you want borders, how about borders? Would it be nice to have borders? And yes, we are already building the wall. It started in California and San Diego. 1.6 billion. We're asking for 5 billion. And I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it's brutal with these people. They don't want it. They, they know it's the right thing to do. But they think it will help me. It's not even the Republicans. They think it'll help Trump. If we do it, it's good for Trump. Let's not do it. They're great Americans. Every day, we are keeping our promises. We've created 3.4 million jobs since Election Day, which nobody can even believe. Nobody believes it. I always say, if I would have said that on the campaign trail, when I was here or any place else, it would have been brutal. They would have said, how can you possibly say a thing like that? 3.4 million new jobs. Unemployment claims are at a 45-year low. African-American and Hispanic-American unemployment have reached the lowest levels in the history of our country. Remember, what do you have to lose? Remember? What do you have to lose? People didn't like it when I said that. What do you have to lose? Guess what? We're right. In fact, a new poll came out last week. We were up in like a week. Ten points with the Hispanic community. Ten points. Because they want to be safe. Unemployment among women is at the lowest level it's been in 65 years and within a couple of weeks history. Our economic policy can be summed up in three very simple but beautiful words. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Since the election, we have lifted three million people off of food stamps. And by the way, on a humanitarian basis, that's a great thing. Do you know how much money we save by doing that as a country? Three million people, and it's going up fast. Wages for the first time in 18 years are rising again. People can go out, they can actually choose a job, and they have wages that are rising. And six months ago, Republicans passed the biggest tax cuts in American history the biggest in American history. Everybody in this room is benefited. Everybody is benefited. We slashed taxes for working families and saved our family farms. We saved family farms. As a result of our tax cuts, $300 billion poured back into the United States just in the first quarter of this year alone. And we're going to have a lot more than that. 300 billion came back. Money that would have never been able to come back into our country. It's coming back, it's pouring back. I think the number is going to be 5 trillion, but 350 billion has already come back. Apple Computer is spending 350 billion dollars on new campuses, on new facilities. They're bringing back 350 billion. They're putting up their own money. They're going to actually have, probably subject to the tax code, about $230 billion come back. 95% of U.S. manufacturers 
are optimistic about the future. That's the highest number ever. Think of it, 95% of anything. You don't hear that. We also repealed, despite the thumb down at 2 o'clock in the morning, we also repealed the most horrible aspect of the failed Obamacare health care. It's called the individual mandate, so it's gone. It's gone. Gone. It's gone. And, you know, that was where you had to pay a lot of money for the privilege of not having to pay for bad health care, okay? One of the truly rip-offs. That was a big rip-off, but we got rid of it. So all of you people, how many people are you paying for not to have it? A lot of people, right? Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people, they paid not to have health care. That doesn't work. We are allowing businesses to join forces to buy better health care for less money through association health plans. They just came out two weeks ago, and they cross state lines. We're allowed to cross state lines. You're going to get very low prices for very good health. Millions of people are already signing up. And after decades of waiting, we opened Anwar in Alaska for energy development. They've been trying to get that approved for 40 years. We've eliminated record numbers of job-killing regulations. We've stopped coal, the assault on our farmers, our ranchers, our hunters, energy producers, and our great and loving miners. We love our miners. And we put our miners back to work. Clean coal. We are proudly and strongly protecting our public lands for future generations. You see that. You see it all over. You see what we're doing. You see legislation. You see what's happening. We approved the Keystone and the Dakota Access Pipelines right away. 48,000 jobs. 48,000 jobs. We withdrew from the job-killing Paris Climate Accord. One of the most unfair deals. I said, boy, I'm going to get killed when I approve this one. When I sign off this, you know, it sounds so pretty, right? The Paris climate. Who wouldn't do that? Except it's horrible for us. Great for other countries, but horrible for us. We took historic action to safeguard your constitutional freedoms, protecting religious liberty, defending the Second Amendment, and confirming a record number of circuit court judges. And we are bringing back our wealth from foreign countries. You know this, right? We are bringing back our wealth from foreign countries that have been ripping us off for years. For too long, we watched and we waited and we saw as other countries stole our jobs, cheated our workers, and gutted our industry. You look at all the places here, yeah, even here, but you look at some places, you look at some, you go up to New England and you still see the, the remnants where they moved down to Mexico under NAFTA, one of the worst deals that we're negotiating. And I have a feeling they'll come along. We'll see. And if they don't, we'll actually do better. We'll actually do better. The United States of America was the piggy bank that everybody was robbing. And let me tell you, our allies, in many cases, were worse than our enemies. We opened our country to their goods, but they put up massive barriers to keep our products and our goods the hell out of their country because they didn't want that competition. And that's not free trade, that's stupid trade. We're not going to do that. We don't do that anymore. We have to have fair and reciprocal, that being the more important word. We need reciprocal. They charge a 50% tax, we charge a 50% tax. Then we say, look, let's bring it to nothing, or I don't care, one way or the other, do whatever you want. 
And then I'll have people complaining. They'll say, it's incredible. So we have countries ripping us off for years. And then when I say, well, look, we're going to put tariffs on there because they have been ripping us. We have trade deficits. They have surpluses. That would be unbelievable. So they have all of this. And I say, we are going to do something about it. And I'll get calls from some politicians. Oh, that's terrible. I said, no, you don't understand. We're going to make great deals. No, no, that's, just leave it the way it is. Please, just leave it the way it is. Leave it the way it is. I said, no, no. We have all the cards. We're the bank that everybody's stealing from. You saw with China, $50 billion. And another $200 billion, frankly, is waiting. Nobody's ever seen this before. Because China, and I have great respect for President Xi and for China. You have to respect him. You have to admire him. Now they'll say, Donald Trump loves China. <laughs> loves China more than he loves the United States. These people. But so you have to be careful what you say. Because if I say that, I do. I respect China and I respect President Xi. But they've been killing us. $507 billion in trade deficits last year. 507. Who the hell can lose 500? Then you want to do something about it, you get attacked. Oh, that's not nice. That's not free trade. The war was lost on trade many years ago. You know, when they were saying, not a free trader, I said, no, no. The war was lost, but now we're going to win it. And because we have all the cards. But it's always helpful when you don't have the little ones sniping at your heels. Because it's easier to negotiate when you have support. You don't have some senator that was forced out of office because he didn't like me saying bad things like, oh, we shouldn't be doing that against China. We shouldn't be doing that against so-and-so. We are in such a great position. Other countries are calling us. Do you know that if we knock down the trade deficit, right, the trade deficit by just a little bit, 25%, and we can do that easily. That's easy. If we do that, we pick up one point in GDP. Does anybody know that? That's $3 trillion, and that's 10 million jobs. That's just 25%. We pick up one point. And speaking of GDP, remember when I'd say it's going to go to 3% pretty quickly and all of this? Well, now the Atlanta Fed just predicted 4.8%. Now, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I can only tell you this. It's going to be a lot better than you had with Obama. And if these people got elected, you would have gone down like you've never seen anything go down. They wouldn't have taken the regulations off. They wouldn't have given you the tax cuts, the Democrats. You would have had an economy that was going to crash and burn. It was ready. And now we've got something that's a rocket ship. And every time I meet a leader of another country, which is often, they always start by saying, sir, I'd like to congratulate you on the incredible job you've done with the United States economy. It's true. Japan, South Korea. Every time they say, I'd like to congratulate you. And others are, st they are actually studying what we've done. They're studying what we've done. But we have the greatest people in the world and we're doing good. You know, that, those hats, those beautiful, beautiful hats make America great again. Soon to be changed to keep America great. Bing, boom, right. Keep America great. Soon to be changed. I can't use make America great again for the second run, right? Does it sort of? They said, why the hell didn't you do it the first time, right? It's called keep America great, because what we're doing is incredible. It's incredible. We've created, think of this, since the election, we've created in wealth. Seven trillion dollars. Seven trillion. Seven trillion. We're the fastest growing nation on an economy basis. Maybe it's for the big nations, but I heard nation. We're the fastest growing economically nation in the world. Think of that. I add the big nation because they're probably back. I don't know. Maybe it said big nation. Whatever it is, we're doing really well. 
But we're one of the fastest, and I think we're actually the fastest growing, and we are certainly growing our military and growing our power and our strength. And we're taking care of our vets more than anybody's ever taken care of our vets. Thanks to Republican leadership, America is winning again. We're winning. Remember, I tell you the story. And America is being respected again all over the world. It's been a long time. We're respected. Somebody said, could you tell the winning story backstage? I said, they've heard it. But Steve Daines, great senator.